All right, folks. Um, there's going to be a little bit of a change in the dissemination of this information. I'm going to do a video right now from start to finish on this, literally the meaning of life, the meaning of the Bible, the proof that the actual meaning has been completely hidden from us, who's hidden it, how they've hidden it, and now it's no longer hidden. Okay, and that was, this is my ministry. My name means Yahweh has given a messenger that sounds an alarm, rings a bell, and gathers the church. Jonathan Kleck. Okay, get ready. Here's what we're going to start with. We're going to start with the cumulative sum of what's called Vatican City. It's called the Basilica. The word Basilica, and I've shown you in previous videos. I'm not going to go through all the looking it up. Go watch the other videos. Basilica means royal palace of the basilisk. A basilisk is a king serpent. Okay, remember that because I'm going to show you that this entire building is a serpent wearing a crown. The first thing I'm going to show you, though, is I want you to get an understanding of what you're looking at. You're looking at an upside-down keyhole at this orientation right now, and there is a cross right here. The Vatican building itself is in the shape of a cross. Once I put it at its proper orientation, the keyhole will be right side up and the cross will be upside down. I'm going to give you all the scriptures to know and to prove the mystery that's been hidden from the beginning. Okay? It will come with 100% scriptural evidence to back this up. So get your Bibles out. After, while I'm doing this video, you should pause this video. You should mark your Bibles. You should go to the concordance. Look up these words, okay? <clears throat> and here we go. Once again, very just straightforwardly, I love you in Christ. I'm not here to entertain anyone's theology, okay? I'm a messenger. Messengers deliver messages from the Lord God, okay? They don't entertain theology from others, okay? So here we go. I'm just saying it like it is, folks. This is St. Peter's Basilica, royal abode of the serpent. I'm going to drop in right here. We're, we're going to do a virtual tour where we drop in right here. And then we're going to drop in after that at number one. I want to show you what you're looking at. So as I go through this dissemination of information, you know what you're looking at. Okay, let's see. Hopefully the audio is not on. Okay, so as we enter into St. Peter's Basilica, we're looking at this altar right here. I'm going to turn that I'm going to turn that down just in case it's recording the audio, you'll still be able to hear me. What you're looking at is St. Peter's altar right here, this thing right all the way at the end of the hallway. What you're really looking at is the head of a locust, and with the mouth of the locust is this circle right here where my cursor is, where the light's coming in. Okay, as we approach the altar, as we approach, this altar right here should start coming into view. You're going to see a sheep with its tongue sticking out. Here's the eye of the sheep. Here's the eye of the sheep. Here's the nose of the sheep right here. Here are the teeth of the sheep and the tongue sticking out. The gold is the wool on top of the sheep, the sheep's hair. As we approach, you should be able to clearly see that that is a sheep with its tongue sticking out. Okay? We're going to go ahead and we're going to exit. And we're going to drop back in and number one. Well, remember where number one is. I'll, I'll make sure you take a good close look at that again. Okay, so now we've come in. At this window right here, now remember I told you, this window right here on the outside of the Vatican, this hole is the mouth of the serpent, this hole. On the outside of the Vatican, which I have not shown you yet, this window is the mouth of the serpent. So as we approach the sheep and we look at the sheep, we can see that the wool of the sheep, the hair of the sheep that goes above the window, 
These are all God's angels, and they're being God's children, the Lord God. These are the Lord God's children, and they're being pulled into this vortex. It's like a dimension, and they're being pulled into there, all of them. Let's back up. Now, I'm going to back out of this tour, and I'm going to show you that this altar right here, you can probably tell, is the female reproductive system. Let, let me see if I can... Let's see if I can adjust. This is the ovary. This is an ovary. This is the fallopian tube. This is the fallopian tube. This is the uterus, cervix, clitoris, and this is the opening to the vagina. And all these things that look like God's angels become pubic hair around the opening of a vagina. I'm sorry. That's what it is. We're being clinical, okay? Now I'm going to turn this off and we're going to go to straight up images. Let me read to you Isaiah. It says, Woe unto them that go deep to a seek deep to hide their counsel from the Lord. That's the Lord God. And their works are in the dark. And they say, Who seeth us? So their identity is hidden and who knoweth us? And the knowledge of them is hidden. Surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. Okay, I'm going to sh show you an image right now then. I'm going to I'm going to reduce I'm going to go back to here. Okay, so the Catholic Church worships the virgin because Satan put his seed in Eve in the garden of Eden. And that, and then Adam put his seed in Eve, and that started the whole system that we live in with a good, a good and evil twin. You have your own evil twin. You, there's a good you, and there's a bad you. Here's the right. Here's an image of the Virgin right side up. Isaiah said, "Those who try and hide their plans turn everything upside down." So when we turn the Virgin upside down, the image is a dead sheep. I just showed you. The largest, and you know what, I'll go back and show you again. The largest throne in the world, altar in the largest church with the largest number of members that claims to be Christian is really Lucifer's church. We're going to drop into number one right here. That's really the nose of the serpent. And we're going to drop in and I'm going to show you again. It is a giant image of a dead sheep. There it is. Here's the sheep's eye, eye, nostril, nostril, teeth, tongue sticking out. This is the sheep's hair on its head. It goes all the way around the window because when the window is turned upside down, it becomes a female reproductive system. Those who try and hide their plans from the Lord turn everything upside down. So surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. Remember, I told you this. Genesis 2, when the Lord God, I'll just show you now. When the Lord God formed Adam, when the Lord God formed Adam, here it is, the Lord God made the earth and the heavens and all that. That's right. He made everything, but Satan and the fallen angels made a pre man. And the Lord God, let's look at what it says. It means Jehovah, the self-existent or eternal God, formed, formed. The word is to mold as a potter right there. Look, potter, formed man from the dust, clay. So the Lord God formed as a potter man from clay right there. Okay, now, Isaiah said, those who try and hide their plans from the Lord, they turn everything upside down. Um, that's the NIV version. The King James version is, woe unto them who go to great depths to hide their plans from the Lord. They do their works in darkness, and they think, who sees us? Who will know? Surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay I just showed you. 
when you turn things upside down, you're going back to your condition before the fall. Okay, and the Lord God formed out as a potter forms clay. Right there. Surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. Okay, before the fall. I just turned an image of the virgin upside down, and it's an image of the of a dead sheep. Now I'm going to show you St. Peter's throne that I just showed you. That's inside the Vatican. Here's the image of it. I've outlined it with Sharpie markers. So you can clearly see it is an image of a dead sheep. Clearly see. Okay, next image. Isaiah said, those who seek deep to hide their plans from the Lord turn everything upside down. Let's turn the image of the whole dead sheep upside down. Okay, there it is. It is the female reproductive system. There is the ovary. There is the ovary. Fallopian tube, fallopian tube. Uterus, cervix, clitoris, opening to the vagina. This, the angels become pubic hair, and as sick it is, as it is, yes, they are being sucked into the vagina because they're falling from heaven. These are God's children, princes that are falling from heaven. They are God's Elohim, and they are falling from heaven, and they are being birthed into their prison suits of flesh. That's what that represents. And the reason they're dead sheep is because they become the food source for Lucifer and his demons. Okay? Just showed it to you. It's a fact. Okay, I'm just going to drag over an image of the female reproductive system, which is right here. This is the female reproductive system. And I've, there it is, female reproductive system. I'm just going to drag it on top of the altar. I have one that's smaller right here. Same one, side by side. I'll take this image, I'll drag it over here, and I'll go, I'll go lay it right on top. There it is female reproductive system, period, absolutely. Okay, so that, that altar becomes a female reproductive system. Again, those who try and hide their plans from the Lord, they turn everything upside down. Their plans were to create a host body in order to capture God's children, and God's uh, children got caught in a snare. Okay, now let's look at the cumulative sum of the Vatican. The building I just showed you, is called St. Peter's Basilica. I'm going to show you that same image at, with the keyhole reoriented where it's right side up now. There is the keyhole. Okay, that is a keyhole. I love you in Christ. If you don't see it, I'm sorry. Let me read to you from the Bibles. Woe from the Bible. Woe to you, scribes and you Pharisees, hypocrites, for you shut up the kingdom of heaven against man. You neither go in yourselves, neither suffer ye that are entering to go in. Want you scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. Okay. Woe unto you lawyers, you have taken away the key to knowledge. Look at it. Taken away, it means hidden. You have hidden the key to knowledge. So here is a big lock. Here is a big keyhole. Let me back out and show you what it is. I'm just going to be very, um, very um, direct in this video. I'm just going to deliver information. When you back out from this, let me show you the Vatican. Remember, Basilica means royal palace of the serpent that kills with its breath or with its look. Okay, so here's the yellow keyhole. It's been outlined, and the Vatican itself turns into an upside-down cross. Woe unto you Pharisees, for you hide the key to knowledge. They've, they've locked the lock and they've turned the key and no one can get in the kingdom now. They're stopping people from entering the kingdom. This keyhole is made from black cobblestones. Those black cobblestones represent serpent skin because you've been born into serpent skin. I'm going to prove it. Okay, I've already shown you in Genesis, but I'm going to show you again at the risk of being redundant. Genesis 3, now the serpent was more subtle than any of the beasts in the field which the Lord God, the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, the word for woman is adulteress, right there. An adulteress is a woman that has sex with another partner outside the covenant of marriage. 
she had sex with the serpent before she had sex with Adam. This is the Targum Jonathan. It is Genesis. Anyone that knows what the Targum is knows that it predated the Bible and it's the way the rabbinical teachers would teach people. Before this, before our Bible was ever even put together, this is the way they taught people. So we're going to go to Genesis 3 and I'm going to show you what happened in Genesis 3. We're getting a little glitch. There we go. Okay. The fall has occurred, and Adam called the name of his wife Hava. Let's go and look at our Bible. And Adam called his wife's name Hava, or we say, we use the word Eve. When you translate Eve to Hebrew, it is Hava. So, this is King James. When you translate the word Eve, it is Hava. And Adam called the name of his wife Hava, we call her Eve, because she is the mother of all the children of men. And the Lord God made to Adam and his wife vestures of honor from the skin of the serpent. Right there. Right there you're looking at it. Which he had cast from him. And upon the skin of their flesh, Instead of that adornment which had been cast away, he clothed them. Because they lost their glorified bodies from heaven, and they got earthly bodies, and they were cast down. That means you and everybody else on the planet. Let me show you the basilica again. Okay, so once again. The entire, here the cobblestones are right here from, from St. Peter's Basilica. Those are what are covering this keyhole because that keyhole represents the skin of the serpent. Let me slide a serpent over on top of it to give you an idea. There's a black serpent. You can look at his scales. You can see how they're the same. And then I'll slide that right on top of the keyhole, which is what this is made of because the keyhole is made of serpent skin. And the door has been locked. Let me give you a representation of that. Because every human being is caught in serpent skin. That's your prison. You came into this world upside down. That's how you were birthed. So here's a representation of the serpent skin that is covering the hole. That's why you cannot go back uh, home. You have to be born of the spirit now in order to see the kingdom of heaven. So the only way to turn that key back and open this lock is you got to, you, the only way to open the lock is to be born of the Spirit of God. And Jesus said, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. The only way to know the truth is to turn everything upside down. I love you in Christ. If you don't get that, I'm sorry. I've gone over it repetitively. Here we go. Back to the Basilica, the royal abode of the serpent. Here we go. Now, the Lord God told me, Jonathan, I want to show you something. Come in and look at look at the basilica at a 45 degree angle to this image I'm looking at. So I was looking at this on Google Earth. I was looking at this image, or this image right here. And the Lord God told me, in order to see what I want to show you, you need to come in at a 45 degree angle, which is what I did. And when I came in at a 45 degree angle, this is what I saw. I saw a serpent wearing a crown. I was like, oh my God, the entire basilica is a serpent wearing a crown. That's funny. The word basilica means royal palace of the crown serpent. The building itself is a crown serpent. It is Satan's Lucifer's church. Now, I'm going to zoom out and I'm going to show you the entirety of the whole complex. And I'm going to show you that that is a crown serpent that is pregnant because it represents the serpent getting pregnant in the Garden of Eden by impregnating Eve with his seed. There is a pregnant serpent right there. And it was used from a host body that was created in Genesis 1. Okay, get ready, folks. Ready for the scriptures? Genesis 1. 
And God said, and I, I, I will reiterate, this is not the Lord God. This is Elohim. The word is gods, gods, and gods, angels, magistrates, said. It means of the supreme God. Gods that are of the supreme God or magistrates or angels said, let us, that's plural, make man in our image. The word image is a phantom image. That is an illusion, a resemblance since a representative figure, especially an idol, a vain show. Those are all attributes of Satan and the fallen angels. That's what those are attributes of. Now, let me show you what God said. In John 10, in John, in John chapter 10, the Jews were going to stone Jesus, and Jesus said, For which good works do you stone me? And they said, We stone thee not for good works, but for you being a man, make yourself equal to God. Jesus said and answered them, Is it not written in your own law? I have said, look at it right there for yourself. You are gods. And if he called them gods unto whom the word of God came, and the scriptures cannot be break, broken, say you of him who the Father has sanctified and sent into the world that I blaspheme because I said I am the Son of God? Jesus was quoting Psalm 82. So let's look at Psalm 82. Psalm 82. Jesus told every one of you, you are gods. You are gods. Here it is. I have said, ye are gods. Read it for yourself. What is the word? Elohim. So Jesus told every human being, you are Elohim. You are Elohim. Genesis 1. And Elohim said, let us make man in our image right there we are the ones we are the ones that are guilty we are the ones that went along with lucifer and his plan that's your identity in christ and the only way to get saved is to get turned upside down keep watching back to psalm 82 here we go psalm 82 psalm 82 you are God's Elohim, right there. It's the same exact word as Genesis 1. And all of you, watch this, and all of you, right there, all of you are children, children, look at this, builders, sons as a builder, because we're the ones building the planet. And all of you are children of the Most High, right there, the Most High, look of the supreme most high god elion it is not elohim all of you are you are elohim and all of you are children of elion the most high god but even though you're gods angels magistrates you shall die like men because that's your sentence you've been cast down to the earth every human that walks the earth you shall die like men even though you are angels you're going to die like men, and you shall fall, look at what it says, to fall, to cast down, and to cast out. You shall be cast out like one of the princes, the captains that had rule in heaven. There it is. I've used the scriptures and proven it. The Lord God gave it to me. I'm an end time harbinger. I'm here to show your identity. By the way, we're not even close to done yet. So, the entire Vatican is a serpent wearing a crown. Well, that's funny. Let's go to Revelation 12. Revelation 12. Mm -hmm. Okay, Revelation 12. Okay, and behold, a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and upon his head, uh, crowns upon his head. Okay, a what? A great red dragon. You see that? Remember I showed you dragon. 
Okay, I'll, I'll highlight it for you. And his tail drew down a third part of the stars of heaven. Those are God's children. That's what he brought down with him. Okay. And there was a war in heaven, and Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon and his angels fought and lost. And there was no more a place found for them in heaven. And that great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan. There it is. Okay, so the dragon is what? He's called that old serpent? Oh, you mean like like this serpent? The Oh, or like this serpent or this serpent? Okay, well, let's have a look at the word dragon. I told you the Lord kept me up the other night. I stayed up till four in the morning drawing in these images. Let me show you an image of a dragon. This is the Sistine Chapel, which is part of the Vatican. Let me, it's where the Pope lives. Here's an image of a big dragon. This is an eye right here. This is an eye right here. This is the nose right here. This is the lip right here. And the lip has got a pointy lip, just like dragons do, and a sharp edged no nose. And there's the open mouth. And there's the chin of the dragon. That great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil. See the red dragon right here? I'll slide it right on top of there. There's your red dragon. It's right inside this building that's called the Vatican. By the way, the building itself is an image of the, the beast rising out of the sea. The Lord showed this to me as well. He said, Jonathan, it's time. It's time to show him everything. Here is an image of a, a alligator. And if you picture a crown on his head and you slide it right over here, here is a dragon coming up out of the sea. The street going around the dragon represents the water. And this is the head of the dragon wearing a crown rising up out of the sea. It means the sea of humanity. It, because he's got different places that he has his crowns, whether or not it's Saudi Arabia and all these countries that the dragon really runs. Let me show you another image. Here's another image of the Vatican with an image of an alligator next to it. You can clearly see it is obviously a dragon wearing a crown. So the same building that's a serpent becomes a dragon wearing a crown. Let's go back and look at the serpent from the other direction now. Okay, now. There we go. Okay, I want to pay special attention to the mouth of the serpent again. The mouth of the serpent I showed you at the very beginning of this video is this window right here. If you don't believe me that that's the mouth of the serpent, let's look in an aerial view map of this complex. And I will show you that even the serpent from an aerial view has a tongue that is a sidewalk in the shape of a forked tongue. Okay, here we go. There you go. Here is the head of the serpent. The serpent is facing that way. And here is the tongue coming right out of the mouth of the serpent. This is the serpent. He's wearing a crown. Uh, it's also a dragon facing us, wearing a crown. Here's the dragon wearing a crown facing us. Here's the nose of the dragon right here. Here's the eye of the dragon, the eye of the dragon, and the crown on the dragon. That great dragon, the serpent, was cast out. Here's the serpent facing the other direction. There's the tongue coming out of the mouth of the serpent, going to the halls of government, which is one building that's rectangular to the other building that's rectangular, which are identical, just like twins, that is being held together by the halls of government which is Lucifer, because this is Lucifer's government. Uh, seed of the serpent, seed of the woman. Cain, Abel. Wheat, weeds. Sheep, goats. It's the, this is the government of the world that Satan runs. Now, I just proved to you that's a serpent. It's not arguable. That, law, that whole building is a serpent. Now I will go ahead and prove the rest of this out. Okay, here we go. There's the split sidewalk right there, just again. Behind this church is called the Chapel Santa Maria, 
La Regina, which means St. Mary, the queen of the family, La Familia. It's right behind the halls of government. Here is that chapel. Here is a dragon right here wearing a crown. There is the eye of the dragon, that dark spot. There is the jaw of the dragon with the teeth of the dragon. That is a dragon wearing a crown, and those are the wings. So behind that is another dragon, because the dragon is what holds together the two twins, the good you and the bad you. That is the actual government of the entire world. Okay, now, here we go. Let's go back to the serpent wearing the crown. Here's the serpent wearing the crown. Remember, once again, that great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan. Okay, here's this serpent. There's the mouth of the serpent. I've shown it to you. Let me show you what the mouth of the serpent is. On the inside of the church, the very window that's the mouth of the serpent is the image of the dead sheep, which is the food for the serpent. This is the mouth of the serpent on the outside of the church, right here. Let me show it to you again. There it is. There's the mouth of the serpent. That This window right here is this window right here. All of God's children are being sucked into the mouth of the serpent, which is the female reproductive system. So every time a new child is born, he's born into a, a system where he is his own worst enemy and he is a slave. And here is the female reproductive system again. Therefore, every child that's created is formed in iniquity and is brought forth in sin. There it is. See it? Female reproductive system, vagina. Every single sperm that goes in a vagina and forms another host body creates another prison for another human, which is another one of God's children being cast out. You getting this? Mm -hmm. Okay, now, let's continue. Okay, I showed you, okay, in Isaiah 30, Woe unto the rebellious children, saith the Lord, that take counsel, but not of me, that cover with a covering, but not of my spirit. Let me show you that. I told you they're hiding in human skin. Been saying it for a long time. Here is a guy holding a suit of human skin that happens to be on the face of the dragon in the the on the face of the dragon that is in the Sistine Chapel. So here's a guy holding a human skin. You cover with a covering, but not of my spirit. Cover with a covering, but not of my spirit. You're looking at it. Let's let's zoom out and take a look. Let me show you what this is. By the way, this is Lucifer right here in the middle. The nose of the dragon is Lucifer. Have you ever heard the term hidden right under your nose? Yes? Here you go. Here's the guy right here that's holding the, this suit of human skin. Here's Lucifer. Look at his arms. One going right side up, one going upside down. It's a reversal. It's Satan's government, Lucifer's government. One right side up. One upside down, right there, you're looking at it. By the way, uh, all of this was shown to me by the Lord God. The Lord God. Let me show you the eyes of the dragon now and show you what's in the eyes of the dragon. Okay, so here's an image of the dragon again. The dragon represents every human being that's ever been on planet Earth, except for Adam before the fall, because before the fall, Adam wasn't part of the dragon system. As soon as he fell, he got a suit made of serpent skin, just like the rest of us, just like you, just like me, and you're born into the flesh, which is an enemy of the soul, and you're one of God's angels that got cast down. That's your identity. The Bible says your identity is hidden in Christ. So here's the eye of the dragon right here. So Adam was not corrupted until he became corrupted, and the only other one to come into the system was Christ. He was, just like it says in Luke, Luke chapter 1, he was that holy thing. It means ceremonially pure, physically pure, and ceremonially uh, moral, without blemish. 
Okay, here is the dragon's eye, and here is the dragon's other eye. The cumulative sum of all of humanity, I love you in Christ, don't care what you say, is the dragon. Adam and Jesus excluded. Adam, when he fell, became part of that system. Jesus was never part of that system. He died on a cross, sinless. He went into the pit, and he broke open the doors of hell. And we are no longer slaves to this creature, Lucifer. And I'm one of God's servants. I serve the Most High God. And I don't take my advice from men. I do not. Let me show you the, the eyes of the dragon. Okay, here we go. This is very important. This dragon has a left eye and a right eye. But before I show you that, let me show you the face of the devil. This entire thing is the face of the devil. Here's the eye of the devil right here. Here's the eye of the devil right here. This is the nose of the devil. And this whole face of the dragon is the open mouth of the devil. Here's the eye. Here's the eye. His ears go up. Ears go up. Nose, open mouth. And everybody is food for the devil. Now, let's look at the eyes. Okay, and here you go. Then let me read to you some scriptures. Woe unto you, lawyers, for you have taken away the key to knowledge. I just want to make sure I don't miss this. I'm going to go back. I'm going to keep going on the eyes of the devil, but I want to go back. I want to make sure y'all don't miss this. There it is. Woe unto you, teachers of religion, you have taken away the key. See, they've taken the key and they locked the door. They, that's why they built the Vatican in the shape of an upside down cross with the keyhole locked by serpent flesh because y'all have been caught in serpent flesh. They won't let you know the truth. They don't want you to know the truth because if you find out the truth, you'll be set free. Jesus is the truth. The only way to recognize Jesus is to turn everything upside down. That's how you recognize the truth. Now go watch my personal testimony. 100% no lying. Busted. Okay, so they hide the key to knowledge. They don't enter the kingdom themselves, and they stop others that are trying to enter. Isaiah 29, 15, here it is. Let's see if it'll load up. Woe unto them that seek deep to hide their counsel from the Lord, and their works are in the darkness. And they say, Who seeth us? Who knoweth us? Surely you're turning the things upside down. So if you turn things upside down, you are you shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. Look, surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as, look, the potter's clay right there. Back to Genesis 1. Genesis, sorry, Genesis 2. When the Lord God formed Adam, as a potter, right there, as a potter, he made him out of the dust, and the dust is the clay, right there. So surely your thing, turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay, what God made before the fall. That means you've been restored to your natural state. Amen. Okay, here we go. Let's keep knocking this out of the park. Let's look at the eyes of the dragon again, okay? Okay, this is the left eye, this is the right eye. Okay, now, Matthew says, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. Okay, remember this. All of you, you shut up the kingdom against men. Okay, you hide the key to knowledge. It says that they're all hypocrites. I highlighted all this in yellow. Okay, watch this. This is Matthew 7 coming up. Judge not, lest ye be judged. For what you ju what with what judgment you judge shall be judged unto you, and what measure you meet it shall be measured to you again. Why beholdest the mote that is in thy brother's eye? Okay, let me show you these eyes of the dragon. Okay, this is the right eye of the dragon. The eye of the this in this eye, what's going on is. This cross is falling over. They can't stop it from going down. This guy's hands are tied behind his back, and he's going straight on his face. He cannot stop it from going down. 
This represents God's children, God's race of beings. Now watch this, God's angels. This thing is falling. Okay, let me show you what it means. Matthew 7. Why beholdest the mote that is in thy brother's eye? It means to wither or like a dry twig or a straw. To wither because the human race is withering away. The beast is taking over the temple of God, which is our bodies. So one eye represents that which is good. One eye represents that which is evil. One right side up, one upside down. And it says, why are you bothered with the mote that's in your brother's eye when there is a freaking beam in your own eye? And look, look at the word beam. It means through the idea of holding up as a stick of timber. Oh, like a stick of timber holding something up. That's what the word B means. He says, why are you worrying about the, you know, the moat that's in your brother's eye, which means what's withering and what's, you know, turning into a twig when there's a beam in your own eye, which means the idea of holding up, you know, with a piece of lumber. And look what the other eye of the dragon is. So one eye is a moat. And the other eye of the dragon is a beam. Oh, my Lord. Wow, look at that. It's a pillar. And by the way, this guy that's getting crushed under here, I can see it already. It's a sheep. It's a dead sheep. A sheep is being crushed while they're erecting this pillar. This guy that it's being erected on top of is a freaking dead sheep again. Yeah. Okay, and what kind of an eye does a dragon have? What kind of an eye does a dragon have? Well, let's take a look. I typed this into Google. I typed in all-seeing dragon eye, right? That's what I typed in. All-seeing eye with dragon. There you go. You see that? You see that? You see that? You see that? Dragon amulets. You see these? You see the line in the middle? Uh-huh. Does that look familiar? Let's zoom out and let's have a, because once that thing is upright all the way, his kingdom is established because he's taken over the host body. Let's have a look. Here we go. Isn't this just mind blowing? Wow. This is the mystery of everything, guys. This is a mystery of all humanity. See, there it is. There it is. And once it's straight up and down, his kingdom, kingdom is completely established. And that's what they're doing. Just like Lady Gaga said, her performance at the Grammy Awards is about another race of beings being birthed within the human race. And you're looking at it. I've given you the scriptures. I want to show you something else. Watch this. Why beholdest the moat that is in thy brother's eye when you considerest not the beam that is in your own eye? First remove the moat from your eye. And then uh, it says, let's see. Or how wilt thou sigh to thy brother, let me pull the moat out of thine eye? And behold, a beam is in thy own eye. Thou hypocrite. Oh my gosh, look at what it says. An actor under an assumed character. <laughs> yeah, inside of you. Stage player. Oh my gosh. Wait a minute, what does it say in Luke? It says, woe to you lawyers. You have taken away the key to knowledge. Oh my gosh. And then what does it say? You hypocrites. Oh my gosh. Stage players. Mystery solved. You're one of God's fallen angels. For all the people that said Jonathan Clegg is said he's a fallen angel, you betcha I am. I'm one of God's children that fell from grace, and I'm here living out my death sentence, and by the grace of God, I was converted. And I'm trying to get you guys back to God, back home to dad. That's why we're ambassadors of reconciliation. You cannot be reconciled to anyone that you didn't know before. And Satan tricked you and you fell for it. You got caught in his snare and that's you. Now, let me make sure I got it all. Okay, that's it. That's it. Matthew 7, write it down. Matthew 7, verses 1 through 5. 
Matthew 23, verse 13 and 14. Isaiah 30, verse 1. Luke, chapter 11, verse 52. Isaiah 29, 15 and 16. And now I've given you all the information through a supernatural gift that the Lord God gave me to prove to you that you are e pluribus unum, out of many, one. And that one that you are is the dragon. That's why you're caught in the flesh. That's why in the Acts of Peter now it says, Peter said, you know, learn the mystery of all things, unless you make the things of the left hand of those of the right, and those of the right hand is those of the left, and those above is those below, and those before is those behind. You will have no knowledge of the kingdom of God. And I'm telling you the same thing. The Lord told me to reiterate the Acts of Peter, to let everybody know, unless they do that, they will not know the king, the king of kings. Love you in Christ. It's the best I can do right now. I wanted to get this out really quick, get it off my plate. Now I can take my time and go through it real slow. I can do a three or four hour video now if I want, and I can just go through it real slow. I already gave you guys the links, man. Go get them right there. Go get this stuff. This is more valuable than all the money in the world. doesn't matter what you have. What should it profit? If you, you A man, if you gain the whole world and lose your soul, because Satan owns it. Satan owns your soul until you get converted, until you get turned upside down. I love you in Christ. You're not saved. End of story. Busted. I mean, how crazy is that? Amen.